Hey guys, this is Golden Ideas, and welcome to the next part of Xanasaga Episode 2, Jensites von Gut und Bosa. In the last part, we made it through the Dammering Secret Area to try and get hold of a special, awesome piece of equipment to help us, uh, well, save Cecily and Kath. In this episode, we're going to see if we can save Cecily and Kath. Um, this door always reminds me of the door from Disney Castle in Disney Castle in Kingdom Hearts. Massive door, but a really small, tiny door for you to just crawl into. But there we go. It's... It's a completely bizarre reference, but um, it does kind of look like that. Also, why not just have a small door around the side or something? Surely that's a lot of mechanics to all the door that is also a door. Please don't say doorception. We've heard that enough. Anyway, this is um, the ship that we're using. It looks familiarly like something probably on the box that you may have seen before. How's it looking? Well, the power's active. Looks like we can do this. I'll initiate the system. Please, hurry and get inside. Okay. <gasps> ah, but it looks like we're a little late. We're kind of surrounded. Yeah, I see them. Hang on tight, Chief. Wait! Alan! <laughs> Sploosh. I'm impressed. Well, it's all part of being a man. And the power of love. And not sploosh. Hmm? Did you say something? Uh, nothing. I'm gonna floor it. Hang on tight. She did a good job flooring it, that's for certain. We've detected Albedo's ascension. I see. He did well. The lock has been opened and the obstacle removed. The rest is up to her. Will matters proceed smoothly? She is suited for the task. There will be no problems. People always try to live a life of choices between good and evil. <gasps> the name of the game! They make pessimism their foundation and praise misfortune and sorrow, and they try to seek a pure heart. Yet this is nothing more than their individual view born out of a comparison with others. Is she who thinks that others right? Is he who opened the door wrong? Only those who stand in the place beyond that point can comprehend the true essence and gain knowledge of absolute truth. Her awakening, Cosmos's awakening, will lead us to that summit, don't you agree? In any case, the, pe the intermission is over and the players stand upon the stage. All that remains is to wait for the knight to appear. And, with that, and for that, it is necessary that someone play the role of the villain. Will he suffice for that role? Do you object? The greater the suffering, the more exciting the drama. I guess you a little insight to Wilhelm there, which is kind of something he doesn't happen very often. 1.41 parsecs to Milsha. No ship signatures around. We're halfway there. What kind of maneuvers are those? That's well beyond the limits of the human body. Ah! We're hit! Shields are lost! I know! Ah! What's going on? Hurry and confirm the situation! 
What's going on? Power. It's no good. It's, it's not responding to our commands. Cosmos. She suddenly started up. But that's not possible. Her started. reactor isn't even installed. The binding is released. I I know. Wait, Cosmos, where are you going? Xion. What? Xion is calling me. So she's gonna go on this hyperdimensional bicycle. Xion? Chief Uziki is. I must go, my people need me. Pretty much is what that is. Also, it's all over. Chief! I thought you were a man. Quit whining and shoot something. Is this the end? Switching your craft to control mode B. Prepare for docking. What? Docking? I think we're saved. Huh. Oh, thank goodness. Enemy craft have withdrawn from sensor range. Cosmos. Thank you. Chief, a transmission. A transmission? Yo, Miss Vector. That was quite a show you put on out there. That voice. Hey, if you're alive, say something already. Captain! And that's that. So we, we were saved by Cosmos, thank goodness, who rode an interstellar bicycle across vast quantities of space and beat us pretty much to there. It makes sense in a way, I guess, because Cosmos does fly faster than anyone could because she doesn't really have the same tolerances of G-Force on her body that we would. But again, it kind of feels a bit <laughs> deus ex machina in a way, or deus ex, I should say. 
But um, yeah, it's a nice feel-good cutscene, and everyone died, and it's Coast Mode's come back, and I do like the music. So the Elsa has been remodeled, and there's a lot of these robots which speak in capital letters at you, and this was one of the decisions I didn't like about the Elsa remodeling. Um, the robots aren't funny, they're not clever, they're not interesting, they're not enjoyable. They are, in fact, this. So this is another ES, the ES Zebula. I always, I always used to pronounce something different, but the ES Zebula is the only one that can use M that you can only use EP. I just said MP then, you can tell it's been a while since I've competed Zen Saga. Um, most, none of the other crafts, the ES Dina, the, which is what we've just received, the ES Zeb, Zeb, no, the ES Dina, the ES Asher, and the, um, the ES that Jin has, none of those are able to work with EP. So you've got to basically have Momo, have Momo in the ES Zebulon to make any, any EP possible, which kind of mixes up battles and makes things a bit interesting, considering, you know, it's, so it can get difficult, and healing is great, and healing items for these for these guys, for the massive ESs, doesn't come along very often, so it's very difficult to get hold of. Anyway, there are a lot of things we can go back and doing now. We've got a lot of decoders, so we might as well go and go to their respective um, areas. Now, this is possibly the worst map in the history of maps. <clears throat> you don't do a map like this. Thanks for telling us the first floors of Cabin 1, Cabin 2, Restaurant, A to B, B, Mobile Hangar, because that doesn't tell us what any of them is. B1, it, this just screams of... We ran out of money and we quickly put a text box in, which, there are a few areas in this game that do that. It's just, you know, funding cut, what do you do? It would have been easier to display a JPEG image of the different floors. I would have been happy with that. It wouldn't have upscaled very well, but it would have still been a lot more indicative of telling you where you're supposed to go. So now we've received the second plate. You've probably seen this before. It's the EVS plate. It can take us back to anywhere, delving into our subconscious domain. Now, someone brought up an actually pretty good point about the, um, this thing is how do you pick up items that you didn't pick up originally and they turn into physical items? Well, I assume what happens is it may be a so it, it it might be tapping into something beyond what the human recollection is, but something which exists elsewhere, maybe in the human collective con sorry, the um unconscious collect oh, the UCC I think it's called. Which would be interesting. Um and then turning it from energy into matter because if they've got any holodeck kind of stuff in this in, in this in, um, in this universe, it's possible to do that. Anyway, at this point, we want to make use of all the skills that we've got, but also want to level up Shion more. Now, characters that you like, characters that you um, level now, every across the board, all the characters will level up the same amount. They won't get any um, S C points and S points, but they will still level up. So it's a really good time to go back and just grind in the Damarung for a long while until you're like level. 40-ish. It's not hard to do, um, and it's actually quite fun because you'll need to do it with some of the upcoming areas, especially if you want to, in the next area, steal all of these um, awakenings, because you will need to steal all the awakenings to complete Captain Matthew's debt, which hasn't, I don't think it's become available yet, but will be, will do, and it's almost impossible without it. There is so much stuff you need to do, and basically, the next best place to grind for stuff is in the Damarong with all the... Um, Junk circuits or the lost ones, which just takes forever and is not fun. So, a word, word of warning to you all. Um, training the Damarong now is, is great because it'll boost your levels, but also it'll um, help surviving in a fight that you may need to survive in. So, what we're doing here is going to collect some of the. We're well, going to collect the uh, plate all the way at the end. So, the plate. The segment address all the way at the end. It's been a while, so I'm just kind of remember all the key terms. And that's a good amount of fun. I do like the segment address stuff. Um, this requires you to actually dash across this and try not to get into any battles because you on your own and the fact that these enemies aren't even weak to you and you're actually kind of weak to them is pretty bad. So yeah, just luckily you made a um, shortcut. So we just follow the shortcut and that's pretty much it. Nice little shortcut there. Just make sure she's at full health, because going into a battle without full health could spell the end, and I was actually really worried that I was going to die, because <laughs> I hadn't saved in a while. Or just having to sit through the beginning of this episode, making it would have been a pain in the ass anyway. So yeah, the idea is just to like really dash through. You didn't have to do this one now if you don't want to, but what we're trying to do is get some of the robot pieces, the robot left leg and the robot right leg, and they give you different ether commands, I'm pretty sure. Like in the last game, they affect you in positive ways, and so... Just making a quick dash through here is probably worthwhile, but we've got a lot of C points and not a lot of S points, so we're just seeing if there's any classes we can, you know, quickly finish off. 
to get some more C points really, I don't know, anything that we actually do need. But it seems like there's not much left. Uh, class 2, no, I mean Rap plus 10 might be good, because we need everyone to really be able to steal, and steal good for this, for the upcoming fight in the Omega system. I keep, I do keep selling this because it's a point, it's, it's like with the Albedo fight, you need to do a lot of preparation to be able to steal the thing you need, which kind of makes me think that they were trying to sell the guide with this game in a way, because there is no way you'd be able to know this otherwise, if, unless you just did everything whenever it was, as soon as it was available. But again, how good you know? Some of the stuff, I don't think you would have, like, especially all the side quests in Milsha, um, second Milsha, sorry. So we'll do class E, because we want Quick to be learned. Quick's a nice little handy thing to have, actually. I'm going to put some skill E's on, because we're trying, going to try and give a Quick, because it may be a little bit difficult in this area to survive, L survive without it, so go back to class level 3, class E, and Quick. Now that'll help out, because you can cast Quick on everyone, and it's it, it on its own cast only on one person, so try not to destroy anything, because things are bound to jump out at you. Now you're going to have to go through at least one fight. There's one fight down the corner here, which is going to snag you if you're not careful. You, I think it may be possible to avoid it, but... No, it's not. This is, there's two There's two fights of these guys. And usually they come into with a massive one, which is not great. I'd recommend you run from fights, but since that's not doesn't happen very often, it might just be a good idea to kill them. Because you could almost take them out in one hit with Shion because of the level difference now. But still, if you notice how, despite the fact we're pretty much area past this, I'm already getting my ass, you know, two turns they've taken off roughly a quarter of my HP, this guy just took off pretty much a half of my HP, and now I'm down to yellow. And that's the issue. It's no longer as easy as just sitting there waiting for your turn to kill them, so you can kill them in the best possible like ch best possible area. You're just out for survival when you go back with Shion. So it might be something you want to do when you get the whole party back, um, and just grind with Shion now, and then come back with this later on, which is perfectly acceptable. But yeah, going to, uh, going to back about the, um, the idea that you can pick an item out of the EVS, out of your basically subconscious, and use it. The idea I think that that comes from is that um, each place is stored somewhere in the um, imaginary realm, and this is going into quite a bit of the depth of Xenosaga. Um, I, I explained in Xenosaga 1 that this universe is made up of, or the universe in the game is made up of two domains, the upper domain and the lower domain. We exist within the lower domain. Things, waveforms, existences, are within the upper domain, now we don't understand those, and they, to a certain extent, do not understand us, that's why they they want to look at us. Now that's going a little bit too into it, and we'll come back to that in Zen Saga 3, but in the lower domain, it's split into two, um, two separate domains. The imaginary domain, which is made up of imaginary numbers, and the lower domain, sorry, the um, real domain, which is made of real numbers. Now, imagine a timeline. Real numbers are 900 to, sorry, minus 999 to positive 999. It's essentially minus infinity to plus, to plus infinity. That's a timeline. Now if you were to draw a, I'm going to say y-axis and hope I got that right, a y-axis on the top of it, or an x-axis, goddamn. I always get those two confused, even even to this day. Then on the top of that you'd have imaginary numbers. Now what an imaginary number is, is it's essentially the square root of negative 1, which can't be done. So because we can't do it, we call it a number. Sorry, we give it a letter. And that letter represents a sum that we can't do. But now we can take that that impossible bit of the sum out and treat it as a letter. So we can now know that that we can now do sums with that letter in it. It's like putting infinity into the in, into an equation. It works much similar to that. So what exists on the real number realm? Well your body, your senses, um, things like that. A table exists on it. What exists on the real number on the imaginary number realm? Well, everything exists on imaginary number realm, but it's not different to how space is perceived in this realm. For example, your will. I want to say soul, because some people bat their eyelids at soul, and I'm like, what's this? We're talking about their will. The person's soul, essentially, really lives there. Um, even inanimate objects have souls. Well, that's, no. Even inanimate objects have existences within the real, within the imaginary number domain. It doesn't necessarily mean they have souls. So, for example, a tree okay, will exist in the imaginary number domain won't mean anything, but it will. And when you try to pass humans, or like, for example, what we do when we um, enter hyperspace, is that's essentially a tunnel within the imaginary realm. Because we're in a ship and a tunnel, we're protected. But if we were just to pass through that tunnel without a ship, a human, or an anything with a cell element of consciousness, would lose that consciousness, and then their body would appear at the destination, 
as like a drone, a mindless drone who's lost their sense of individuality. That's because it tends to join with like the universal collective, sorry, the, the, the collective, the collective consciousness. Um, the, what's it called? The unified collective conscious, there we go. Um, and that's, that's a story for a whole other time. But essentially, if everything exists within that, and our memories tap into that, when you dive in, when you dive into it, you could be diving into a digitized version of what exists within the imaginary realm. And so if you were to pick up an item, it would be as simple as taking that item and converting it into a real number physical formation. Which, again, isn't too complex for items. For people, yes, but not for items. Now, there are a few instances where someone, like, goes back and gets stuck somewhere else. Now, the EVS system has actually been explained previously um, as kind of this digital domain. And also, it gets a little complicated because it does explain to somewhat in Pied Piper. Because a kid does go into that and, you know... Essentially, it's like it's like what we were, when we went into that digital world at the beginning um, of Zenith Saga One. But again, it's how you get that information, which I assume was probably from the real from the imaginary number domain, with some like references to real number domain stuff, without them probably understanding that, because they don't thoroughly actually know they must understand the real, the imaginary number domain simply because they created the Hilbert effect, which is like a cross cross talk between the two languages that are that be, if you want to say, that's not grammatically correct, but two languages which exist in that area. It's kind of, it is confusing, I like totally admit that this is a confusing a confusing concept to get your head around, but this is why I love Xenosaga, because there's lots of concepts like this, which they throw in and use it to explain things, and to some, e to some extent it makes a nice amount of sense. Anyway, the reason why I didn't cut these battles is because this episode would be a lot of, well, full of nothing and not very big. But what we're doing at the moment is we're just heading through. I mean, we've not got much to go at all before we're there. But it's just these goddamn stupid battles. And the fact that they've got so much HP, but luckily because you're not physical attacks, you're dealing a decent amount of damage. If you were if you were like Ziggy, you'd be dealing like 20 damage all the time. That battle I honestly thought I would be dead in, so I just tried to get it over and done with. So yeah, heal up as soon as. But we're very near to the robot part that we need, which is good. Yeah, in case you can't tell, my voice is a little bit raspy. I've actually been ill for like a month now, um, and it's finally coming to a close, thank goodness. I don't like to go, oh my god, I've been so ill. But I've just had one thing after another, and just catching so many different stuff, and it's ridiculous. It's like what they call it here in university is fresh as flu, which is basically a way to say that I went out drinking the entire time and got plastered, and my immune system got killed because of it. But for me, it was I stayed in, went out for, to do some stuff, and my immune system didn't get that plastered, but other people's immune system got that plastered, mutated the virus and gave me a super virus which made me ill. No. And then I made some other people ill, and then they made me ill again, and it was this wonderful circle of general German illness, which is fun. I like to see that. So that's, and that was one of the reasons why I haven't been uploading. There are other reasons, and they will be, they will be there in like an update, which should be either today or when this next gets released, because this episode's nearly done. Um, if you want to know, if, you want, if you're looking to the left and you can't see the map, it's because when we go back to areas, there's no point reanimating the map, you kind of know what, what's, what's what. Um, it just takes a hell of a long time to do it. If there's new stuff, um, and you guys are going to, I will do it, but not here. So finally, oh, Secret Key 5, it's not a robot part. My bad, Secret Key 5. But yes, um, that will now unlock another move. The Secret Keys essentially unlock these moves that have got the question mark, question mark, question marks. And there is a big poster that comes with the guide telling you them all, which I plan to scan in and upload for anyone to actually want to use. It's about, I think, four a four piece pages long. I'm just trying to actually look what it is, but I'm not sure. If you want to actually find out what it is, you go into your items and you just have a look from there. Now, if you want to exit the UMN, you can instantly do it like that. I thought you had to make it back to a plate and exit from there, but you do not. So that's lucky. That really saves a lot of time. So let's take some time to explore the Elsa. It's changed quite a bit, and I thought, well, this would be nice to do. So, the two, the main area is split up by this weird, weird glass fence, which I think would be like the first thing to break in any sort of combat. Um, but then the else is a pleasure cruiser, but it does have significant weapons. So this is the female dorm, as you can tell, I think, by the pink on there. I have a secret side job, but I haven't told Captain Matthews. I plant growth enhancers. Um, well, if they're plant growth enhancers, that's fine. But anything else, you sound awfully like a spam bot. La 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 la. Anyway, there's Ziggy and Momo. I was going to say Christmas then. What in the world happened? I was so surprised to see your signature here. I see you in trouble as usual. Who attacked you? It didn't look like any one of those. Oh, Ziggy. 
Foreshadowing. Come on, I've got to foreshadow at some point. There are times where I feel so, so bound tight to not say anything to spoil the story. I'm going to foreshadow that one moment and be done. So yeah, this is the boy's dorm by the fact it's not a pinky colour. Gender roles still exist, apparently, in space. The mystery boy that's with you, does he have something against me? He's nice to everyone, right, but he's, like, mean to me. The mystery boy who's with you. Is he talking about... Is he talking about, like... Not Ziggy. Because it says boy, I'm tempted to say it's Junior, but... Like, who the shit cares about these robots? It's like the gender and people personality from Mijoyo's Guide to the Galaxy. Sounds ghastly. It is. So yeah, this bit is basically a load of robots want to try and find the perfect hangover cure for Captain Matthews. If those of you don't remember, his cap says, Caution, I'm a boozer. And apparently, he's been beating... Well, no, he's been been beating. I better finish that. People up. There we go. So yeah, this guy, when you talk to him, says, You better bring something good this time. Oh dear, better win then. And apparently, that is weird because it's like the event has, the event that you're in has already happened, or that guy literally just checks if correct thing found, do this, if not, display, you better have something good for me next time. Which means that it, even before it started, he's like there, it's almost a little bit of, I guess, bad programming with the events, but, you know, whatever. And when he comes here, he drinks a lot, really friendly. I'm not going to read this in a robot voice, I did originally when I recorded this episode, but goddamn, I'm going to do it again. I know three droids that have needed major repairs after Captain has been done with them. I need to find a Okay, so he has beat people up. Robots, but, you know. We're gonna call them people because they seem to have some form of personality despite the fact I hate the way they look, I hate the way they sound, and yeah. Okay, so he has like a beer can going into the back of his head. Yeah, cool. Do not contain alcohol. So this is basically a riddle. There are three drinks that do not contain alcohol. You want to mix those three drinks together. And... There we go. And make a hangover remedy so the captain can stand. When you tell me to begin mixing into the three digits and the three digits from left to right indicate orange juice, tomato juice, and coffee. I found out that the three digits should total to seven in order to make something the captain will drink, but I couldn't find anything else. You may ask my friends in the room. Perhaps they know something. I'll leave it up to you whether to trust them or not. When you're ready to make the remedy, come talk to me, by the way. I only have enough for five tries. If you fail, I won't have enough for the next try, so Captain Matthew, so please do it. So basically, um, the best way to put it is that this is one of those missions that you can fail really easily. There's another one which basically, if you talk to this woman um, without completing all the side quests, instant fail, and you can't complete all the side quests, which is brilliant. Um, so don't, I should, it's somewhere in second Milsha, so don't talk to her. So let's please talk to the Captain Matthews robot. So essentially, we've got to just put three digits together that are equal seven um, at the moment. So that would be a three, a three, and a four. Uh, there's a lot of combinations of that, so we need to kind of find out a bit more about this. Um, some more elements to this riddle. So let's start off then, shall we? Um, let's talk to one of these guys. My secret is special, we should listen to the others first. Oh great, really. We're, we're, we're being this much of an asshole. Um, if you want to hear my secret, listen to the others first. Uh, I can't do that. Would you like to learn about that? Yes, I would, thank you. Despite his demeanor, the captain actually likes fruity drinks like orange juice. Okay, so maybe orange juice gets a certain preference. Shards, yes, you should tell me. Yes. The captain likes tomato juice and coffee about the same. So I think from that we can already infer what we're supposed to do, really. Well, infer me the wrong... It's, imp the, the, it's already implied. Yes, I would. The captain never drinks just plain orange juice. Well, that's not the case because he likes coffee and the other one about the same. So, do you want to know what? Yes, I would. He's always saying that balance is important. Okay, so from that we can guess that there's going to be a, a higher priority to orange juice and that coffee and tomato are going to be the same. Which means that for that to happen, there's only one sum that we can do that equals seven. It's a three, sorry, it's a four for the orange, a three for the tomato ju juice, and a three for the um, uh, duh, duh, other juice, and a three for coffee. So let's just go and put that in, shall we? So remember, orange is the, orange is the first one, Coffee is the sec. Sorry, tomato is the second, and coffee is the third. That is the answer. It's always the same. Left orange juice, middle tomato juice, right coffee juice. There we go. Coffee, I should say. So the total seven. So that's four. Um. Ah. 
Huh. Yeah, that would be right. 3, 2, 2, which equals 7. Where did I get the whole 4 from? I was clearly thinking of 3 plus 4 equals 7. So no, half that. 3, 2, 2. I'm such an idiot. I am such an idiot. My math sometimes. I'm right on, but I have the wrong numbers, and I think it's right. And I know people are going to be screaming at the monitor, cool your tits bros, because um, I can't hear you, and also, stress is negative, and it will affect your life negatively, and you do not want that in your life, so try to remove it by removing the things that annoy you, which might be closing this video down, but by this point, I'd imagine that might be a good idea. Stress is um, almost entirely terrible, and is uh, a known problem in the universe at the moment. I'm pretty sure the Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy has something on that. Anyway, Global Samaritan Campaign 27, the master bartender has been finished. And he couldn't have done it without us because his logic circuits couldn't comprehend what he needed to do. Uh, whatever. So now we get Decoder 14, which means we can go to another area to get another thing. Now this area, this basically episode is just like picking a bunch of stuff up. And because it's kind of in the middle of two massive areas, I wanted to leave all the stuff in to kind of break things up because otherwise we would literally have two kind of stressed out areas. Okay. So this one is an old Milsha. A trip back there would be nice and fun. So let's go on it. Let's uh, head back to old Milsha 14 years ago. Because that's not going to set off some massive, massive emotional triggers, is it? I'm actually kind of amazed that if you do take Shion back there, there is no emotion. She just doesn't trigger at all. I mean, for something that Shion's been through, I'd imagine there's a hell of a lot of things that would set her off. I mean, she seems to be... For someone who went through that level of trauma at such a young age, fairly together... Which is the interesting thing, a lot of people claim that that makes her a bad female protagonist because the issues which happened previously haven't affected her as much. Now, that's not the case because they have affected her in different ways. She is who she is because of those events and the way that she acts is massively down to those. But you'd expect there to be some elements of something else. Like some other mental disorders that might have come about through that. And it's... In a way, the fact that they haven't dealt with that with Xion, um, the only real really see her lose control in episode 3, and that's because really, when you think about why she would lose control, I'd be like, meh, the freedom you can, you can just leave if you want. What crawled up your ass and died? Uh, well, you're doing a shit job. So yeah, I don't know, I don't know what are your opinions on that, because you, to a certain degree, from Xenosaga 1, we know what they've been through. We know what she's been through. Um, Xenosaga 3 makes it so much, make, like, actually shows us really what she's been through. And I'm kind of going to ask that question later on. Like, do you think who she is today is a realistic, believable person of who she, uh, like, bearing in mind what happened to her then? Because she was a kid then and stuff happens to you at that age. But also, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just kind of. These ideas that I come out with in the episodes, maybe not fully formed, but there's something that opens up a discussion point between you and me, and that's something I really like doing. <clears throat> because this game, they can be discussed about to such a great degree, and that's brilliant. Okay, so this is the this is the debt I finally got here. So we have to fill his debt now. Oh, great. Captain Matthew's debt. There is nothing like this. It's hand over any unnecessary items and accessories to K2. See, they say accessories. We don't really have accessories in this game. In fact, we only have items, which is another reference to the basically completely destroyed, um, what's it called? Like, weaponry there, it says closed. That's another, that's another point towards the fact that they did originally have a shop system where you could buy weaponry, but in the end just totally ruined, just totally took it out in the, in the, in the, um, I think the thing of time. So basically, this guy is a massive pervert, despite the fact he's a robot. He can change the clothes on the old man, so he's now changing into a swimsuit, which... I appreciate swimsuit parties, but come on. Now the only way you can actually continue with that mission is when you head back to Second Milsha, and he's basically sat in the port in Second Milsha, and that's really what, all you can do. Otherwise, he just stands there and says, thank you for helping, despite the fact we haven't actually helped yet. So yeah, I don't really like this. I mean, don't get me wrong, the last Elsa would always confuse the willies out of me, but this one, not so much. In fact, it's I don't like it because of that. In a way, it just feels too small, too cramped. Which, there we go. So yeah, Captain Matthew's death, the worst thing ever. It's about, I think, a million um, credits, but since you don't get money, 
everything you do, everything you own is basically has a price. And that price is only for this side quest. So, oh god, really? No, no, not him. He's in roller skates. Oh god's sake. Ton of things you want to talk to Alan about. I'm sure he's sat there probably wetting his pants after the ordeal that we have. Well, we still haven't been fired, despite the fact we stole something. But then again, the higher ups know what's going on, as you could see. So let's um, head to the n to Old Milsha, I should say, because that would be a good idea. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, but it's still a bit sore. So let's head to Old Milsha to collect the uh, robot arm, and then with that we can get another ether piece, which is be really handy. And also, there's not too much of a way to go there. And I think when we go there, we like run ridiculously fast, because obviously it's a, an area originally meant for ES Craft, and when you revisit ES Craft levels, or at least the first one, you don't go in the ES. And so we're back. Well, whatever. You're back. I've been... I'm back. You've been, like, sat here for a second, and whatever. So we're gonna head to, um... 14 years ago, and there is actually something we can get in the Damarung, but this will be between this episode and next episode, because I will be level grinding massively. It's not something I usually do in games, okay, it is, but in this game, because I don't want to die, and I really want to be higher leveled, because later on, I do not want to get my ass handed to me in this game, and I want to be able to survive the, um, the battle that I needed to get all the Awakenings pretty well, so this is probably the best, well, that was probably the best place to do it, sorry, the Damarung, not here. So see how fast you run, like, that is... Those are some pretty big strides. So you run until the, the mess that you left with the ES, and pretty much there's nothing really here. I mean, you glide across the floor like, I don't know what, like it's made out of whatever. There is an item. Now the thing in this item is most of these items are pretty much infinite if you do, if you wanted to grind for them, but it's pretty handy just picking that up, just going a tiny bit out of your way to pick it up. Especially considering there's almost no effort for that. Maybe an extra 30 seconds and an extra two med cadets, which you never know might come in handy. You might also sell them for Captain Matthew's debt. Oh, my phone's going off. Brilliant. <laughs> Always during recording. So yeah, this takes you pretty much instantly to here. Bypasses a lot of the ES section. Um, and the new area that I did tell you about when we first came here, like, remember this ladder? Well, pretty much this is exactly what this bit's for. It's so it's basically in. The game knows you're coming back and they've planned that into the area, which is really nice. And again, it's a sign that the developers actually cared and put an extra bit of effort in because they could have just made you run around like nothing else but you know like the area was originally but now they've done this because you could see this from the very first time you came here from the very beginning of the game you saw this chest and you're like how do I get that I can't get it on this visit maybe I come back later on okay it's not that brilliant it's a biosphere but I think your idea is you're meant to head you can head back here as soon as you're done and obviously you can't get the, the thing there so it's almost a wasted trip so yes, um, Saint Warriors 14 has been decoded, let's go in. Mora added, let's see how we can how much damage we can do. Okay, so there's two things. We get a decoder number seven and the robot right arm, which means the decoder seven would go to segment address seven, which I'm pretty sure is in the Damarung area. So it means we can go back to the Damarung to level grind and do something else. I like the way things work out when this happens. So next up, we're just gonna see how easy these guys are. Wow, zero damage, and that was with his guarding though. So let's see what happens when we don't guard. Backshot, naught. You know, I always find that, you know, after a significant amount of training and gearing myself up, a shot to the back of the head just does nothing to me. But as soon as I meet guys, you know, about the same level as me, shot to the back of the head really is bad. <sighs> Game logic sometimes is brilliant. Because that's still a shotgun, and you're still being shot pretty much to the back of the head. Your brain matter isn't that tough. But anyway. Pretty much, I want to try and kill these guys on a skill point, but there's three of them, and the way that it works is a little bit annoying, so... It doesn't really matter. If I got the other one, that would have been fine, but... So you can pretty much play through this without losing a single bit of HP, which is... It's kind of fun. There we go. Get him on a skill point, even though there's really no point in us. Even if we get a skill point times ten, it'd be a massively wasted opportunity. Yay! Okay, so let's leave now. We've, we've pretty much explored all we have to in this area. This, we still come back to Old Milsha once for a side quest, um, but when we come back there, we should be, I think maybe once or twice actually, from what I remember. Okay, so now we're heading back to the Damarung. 
It's literally been all around the place this episode. We've got a few quests, side quests done, and uh, great, we've got to head battle all these enemies. We'll battle a few of them just to show you how easy it's now become to grind, even though we've just been here basically. Can we destroy them in two hits? Almost, but not quite, still. It's a shame because I really would like to defeat them that quickly, but there we go. Oh no, it's off, it's off bounds. What are we going to do? Well, that, pretty much. So you can pretty much beat them in those in that, in that really nice quick move set. If only we had something which like um, an item which gave her a boost as we entered, like Xenocycle 1, because that battle system was great fun. And the, st the stuff you could do, I mean I guess it only happened really later on in the game where you could do all this stuff because of, um, it wasn't E points. You had skill points. Yeah, it was skill points, wasn't it? Because T points, tech points, was um, for your tech items and stuff. Yeah, well, that, ma that makes sense. So, yeah, just going to defeat these. I think after this we'll pretty much cut any battle that we have to get into to get to this room, because I know there'll probably be at least two or three. And also I realise this episode's gone on for a little bit long. Um, yes. So yeah, all in all, this game is emulating pretty much fantastically now, I have to say. It does look really nice, and plays really well as well. Um, the only thing which isn't is on the, a lot of the 2D images there's a little bit of... Um, a little bit of gunk around the edges of some things, like for example the little arrow you see, there's a little bit of gunk there, but all in all I seem to remove most of the issues. So predictable. No and this is the first episode that will be rendered at 1080, and um, this is because um, YouTube doesn't like degrade my episode to like arse in the end and I just want to kind of get them up. And because of the way things are going, it might be easier to just 1080p them all, and therefore, you know, things look good. So we can't really sneak past him, so I'll meet you when we get there. I'll burn you to a oh. crisp. And here we go. That's the uh, so final battle defeated. Hopefully we can just get in there, get the robot arm, and get out. Um, and this is great because we hopefully get something else in here that's maybe another decoder. So just slip round here and head into that door there. It's pretty much remember, when we all should remember where it was, it was in that elevator area. Well, actually, you know, we probably shouldn't because it's been a hell of a... <laughs> it's not here. It's in the room. I oh, know it is in here. There's two of them. There's, yeah, there's two in here, isn't there? There's one at the back that I think we actually went into. And there's one in here that we haven't been into. Yeah, my bad. So, yes, none of us remember because it's been such a long time. I fully accept that's probably the case. <laughs> I think it's in C. C or D. One of the two. Nope, definitely not in C. Is it in D? Nope, it's not in D. Um, no. Oh, great. It might be in E. It was definitely on this side. Okay. Well, it wasn't in E. Maybe it was in um, B. It probably was in B. Nope, it's probably in A then. Well, that was just a mind bending. I could have gone there already, but. Ah, well. So yeah, and here is just the robot but left part. If we head back, and um, we'll find out more about that in the next part. Right now, though, we're just going to grind in the damn room, and I'll meet you once I finish grinding. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.